Welcome to Knit Habits. I'm so glad you're here with me today. My name is Christina. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina with my family, my husband, my grown boys, and my daughter, soon to be daughter-in-law. They're getting married in April. Um, and you can find me on Instagram as xtina underscore netta and on Ravelry as xtina k yarny if you'd like to follow along. I also have a email, uh, which is below, which is uh, knithabits at gmail.com if you'd like to get in touch with me. But I'm glad you're here, had some new subscribers. And so welcome in. I'm glad you can spend some time with me. And I have uh, some things to show, some finished objects, some featured patterns. Um, so yeah, we're just going to kind of jump right into it today. Um, let's see here. So We'll start with the featured patterns. I did talk about this last time since the um, Stephen West MCAL was starting, which we'll get into that whole thing here in just a little while. Uh, but wanted to just talk about the two that I have participated in. I um, did the um, slip stravaganza, the first, that was the first one that I ever did. And then I did shawlography the next year. I didn't do the one last year. I started it and then I didn't finish it. It just, um, didn't suit my, my aesthetic. So I just didn't want to spend my time and it was going to be a lot of time. If you remember, a lot of people spent a lot of time doing that one. So I didn't really want to do that. So I didn't, uh, pursue that one, but um, the slip stravaganza. So this one, um, I have to preface cause there are some mistakes in it and I'm just going to preface it. I'm not going to make excuses, but I'm going to make a preface it in the fact that the only thing that I had really knit before this was garter stitch. Um, on my Instagram, if you go on there, I posted, um, back in the day, 10 years ago that, uh, Facebook, you know, it does that, those memories for you. Um, and I posted that I had finished my first ever, you know, knitted thing. And I, I do have it. I didn't bring it out for this, but, um, which is just a garter stitch shawl, uh, not shawl, but, um, scarf. So that was like really all that I had ever knit before. So this was quite the undertaking. Uh, yeah, there's some mistakes in it, but you know what? I, I love it because of the fact that I had never done anything. I'd never done a mystery knit along. I'd never knit a shawl. I had never done mosaic knitting. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, it's a win. So, um, this is all made out of Holst garn. Um, whole super soft, just like my one for this year will be made out of as well. So the, um, the blue kind of color is called purple haze. Um, even though this, sorry about the lighting today, it's not the best lighting in the world. Um, it is a deep blue, um, but it's called purple haze. It has a little bit of a purple to it, I guess. Uh, this pink color in here is um, the sweet pea that I have that I'm using in my um, geo gradient this year. So that's this color. Um, that's sweet pea. So, um, and then the kind of minty green is called spring, which is this color here. And then this kind of orangey color is called ember. Now, where are the mistakes? Well, the biggest ones are here. Uh, it's supposed to be those fancy triangles. I don't have fancy triangles. 
<laughs> um, you know, and when you're doing a mystery knit along and you've never really knit anything before, um, you know, especially this complicated, I didn't know that's what it was supposed to be, but, um, yeah, so I'm still proud of it. I mean, why not? It, it's still quite an achievement, especially this I-cord bind off down here, which was like well over 900 stitches. Um, so yeah, so that is my slip extravaganza. And there is a project page for that on um, Ravelry. This next one, the uh, shawlography, I apparently did not do a project page. So I'm going to do my best to tell you what it is. Um, they are, I think, mostly yarns from um, Hypnotic Yarn. I think they're part of the Yarnable boxes. Uh, I know that this... This brown colored one here is a Leo and Roxy color. If I can find out what they are, if I have extras, I will um, link it below. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I I love his knit alongs generally. Um, this is the one with the shrimps. <laughs> um, they're fun. I, I love joining with everybody else. Um, just that sense of community and I, I love the mystery of it. I think it's really fun. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot, sorry. So yeah, it's just really pretty. I love how colorful it was last year. I did wear this to Rhinebeck last year because it was rather warm, so I wore that. Okay, so finished objects. Uh, I think one of them is pretty obvious. I am wearing it and it was kind of funny. Yesterday I was wearing my lovely tee. It was warm enough. I got my went and got my hair trimmed and it was warm enough to wear that with like a little tank top underneath it or cool enough to wear it, I guess. Warm enough, cool enough. Um, so I did that and then today it's nice and cool outside. So it was a perfect day to wear my fall stripes sweater. Um, the striped sweater by Andrea Mowry. It's all made out of Rama Finnel. And I have all of the colors listed on my project page, which I can have linked below. And um, the only modification I did on this sweater, I did do an extra inch. Um, she has you stop at 12 inches. I like my sweaters around 13 inches. I think that for me is a good length. Um, and I did modify the sleeves a little bit. I did not do the amount of um, decreases that she has. My arms do not decrease uh, an inch or two stitches every inch, um, you know. So I, I decreased about oh, three inches, three sets of inches or three sets of decreases here. And then I didn't decrease again until I was down here. And then I decreased pretty aggressively. She has you decrease to, I don't know, 30 stitches, something like that. I decreased to 50 stitches. I did mine, um, as you can see here, bracelet length. And I did it a little bit longer. Um, so, but yeah, it, it fits really nice wearing it um you know i i have a tank top on underneath or a capri not a capri um camisole on on underneath um and i i like that the neck is a little bit loose and i it fits really well so i'm really happy with the fit and i love the fall colors and i did this for the knit along on um for the woolly thistle so i this is actually i was pretty proud of myself this is the first time i have entered a knit along and actually finished it before the end date so yay me um, i was pretty excited about that part and put it on facebook and on their group um so the only difference i did is she has you uh, do pick up when you do the structured collar she has you do the ribbing at the top in the same color i just i felt like it would have been just too much of that same color so i ended it in this um kind of chartreuse color which is right here on my elbow 
Um, and then I just ended with this on the sleeves and on the bottom in that same color that came in the same pattern. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. I'm going to be taking it up to Rhinebeck. Uh, I might wear it at Woolen Folk instead. I'm, I'm hoping to wear the Alpine Bloom, which I'm going to show you in a second and talk about what I changed on the sleeves on that one as well. So very happy with this one. I, I know I'm going to get a lot of use and, and out of this sweater, especially now in the fall time. And really, I think you can wear this anytime. I know that they're very fall colors, but they're beautiful colors. So I think it's one that I can wear. Um, sorry about kicking the camera. Really anytime, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So my other finished object, my Rhinebeck sweater. And, you know, I... I've really been exclusively working on this. I don't have, I, I really, I did some embroidery, but not enough to show. So I'm not going to show it on here this time, but, um, so just working on these sweaters. So Alpine Bloom is done and I couldn't tell you, I am so thrilled with this. Um, this is the Knit Picks Capretta. Here's the beautiful lace detail on that sleeve. Just gorgeous. And I'll tell you how I did this different. Um, same on the collar. I am in love with this, this pattern. I love this lace on here. Just gorgeous. So I did not do short sleeves. Um, I am not a short, I, I, I can do short sleeves. I don't mind doing them in summer. I just didn't feel like I wanted to do that on this. I wanted it to be a little bit longer, especially wearing it to Rhinebeck. So this is kind of a, a three quarter length sleeve. I know it looks longer right now, but it's really not once you put it on. So she has you, um, knit just a few rows after the yoke. So once you pick up those stitches here, she has you knit just a little bit and then she has you stop, put it on either waist yarn or a barber cord. And then she has you knit this lace portion of the sleeve on a separate needle um, from this end to here. So you're move this over here. So you're knitting it from up here down to here. And then she has you graft it with a Kitchener stitch onto the sleeve. I just, I didn't do that. I didn't want to do that. So what I did was I knit as many rows as I wanted to, which I believe I have it marked on my project page. I think it was like 51. It just worked out to be like 51 rows um, and I believe I did some decreases, but not many. And then I just worked the pattern from where it ends on the way she has it on there because you're grafting it. So from here is the end of it. I just worked it backwards and I'm really, really happy with the way this turned out. It's very soft. I really love the color work on it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Came out nice and not bumpy. I think it's just gorgeous. So I will wear this at Rhinebeck. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to hopefully meeting some of you. That would be wonderful. Um, I'm also looking forward to being, you know, meeting some uh, po podcasters as well. Amy Palco, I'd love to meet. Uh, Leslie Friend, I'd love to meet. I would love to see Michael from Peace for Peace Crafting again. I met him last year, that was lovely. Um, so anyway, lovely pattern, really fun color work. And uh, if you like this sleeve modification, check out my project page. I was pretty, um, I, I try to detail as much as possible on there. So that, is Rhinebeck and finished objects. So what have I started? Well, like many of you, uh, you probably, well, maybe you didn't, I don't know. 
Some of you may have started the Geo Gradient by Stephen West, and I definitely did. I got about halfway through the um, first clue, and then everything kind of fell apart, as I'm sure if you've been following all of that, you probably know what happened. So I'm not going to go into a great detail, but there was um, people that felt that it represented or showed or resembled, however you want to put that, the hate symbol of a swastika. So he pulled that all back um, in a very short period of time. Um, I have to say, from my standpoint, when I listen to people all the time on the phone, um, I could hear how upset he was and how how much it affected him in his voice, at least from my standpoint. Um, so I felt I felt pretty bad for him. But he has pulled it out. Uh, he has pulled that all off. Uh, there's no pictures of it anywhere. That being said, I at first was not going to rip it out. I was like, no, I've already gotten this far. I'm not going to do it. And then I watched his video. And, you know, the thing about knitting is we do like to show it off. We want people to see it. And I wouldn't want to have people see what I've done and see something in there that whether I saw it or not, you know, is, is neither here nor there. It would, it would be, it could be hurtful to other people. So that's all I'm going to say about that. So I have restarted it and I am going to put up a picture of the one that I'm doing. He, he had his own alternative that I think, you know, probably knowing him at three in the morning, he, you know, came up with and put a new video out and, you know, all of that. So I decided I didn't want to do that. I looked through, he has on the group page, he has some alternatives. And so I decided I wanted to do, and sorry, I have to look at my notes. Um, I am going to do the pink queen yarn and I'll have a picture inserted of um, the the one that, it was a test knitter that changed the inside square of that, that uh, clue one. And so I'm gonna do theirs, their version of it in my colors. And I will uh, show you what I have so far, which is not much. Um, there you go. That's all of the colors representative, represented, representative. Uh, so I have Sweet Pea, Parma, Aubergine, and Vintage Heather. So not, not much to show. Um, there you go. And I'll have the colors here. I know last time I recorded, I was, I told you I had figured out what I was going to do with the colors um, because I'd bought colors that were all together or not all together, but too close in color, right? So I told you I was going to change that. So I will show those here. So what I changed was, these are the two that I kept the same, right? So I kept, there's the whole scar, super soft in the sweet pea, which I already showed. And I kept the whole scar and super soft in Parma. And the ones that I changed were these two. So I changed out some of those other dark purples for the Auber aubergine. There you go. And the vintage Heather. Which isn't really a good picture, but there you go. So I am going to do that pink queen version and uh, we'll go from there. So that's all I have to say about that. Um, I'm so sorry, I keep saying um way too much. The other thing that I started was some socks. I have not done socks for quite a while. My sock mojo has been quite gone. Um, there I go again. Hold on one moment, I need to get a tag. These socks are done in Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And I just had um, a skein of a color from 
the Wicked Nitta that I just had extra that I used that I spoke about last week in my Miss May um, uh, shawl. So that's this is just a, an extra little bit from that. So I'm using going to use this on the heels, um, sorry, heels, toes, and the cuff. And then this is the Fiber Nymph Dye Works in, on her Heavenly Base. And this is from last year's Autumn Palette for her pie yarn. So I would have loved to have gotten this done before I ran back, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. So here is Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And there is her Autumn palette pie it's an 80 10 10 and it is working up so cute these are on a us1 2.25 i am a nine inch circular needle person i would love to be as cute as ray and have that nine inch circular thing going on but we'll just go with it so there is that i i am loving this and i love that with these this is the fairground socks by Kay jones of the bakery bears and i love that she took a, a pattern that she wrote for self-striping yarn that just looks a little bit different i think it's really fun so i'm excited about that um and let's see what else do i have to say about that 64 stitches 2.25 us1 that is that really color really pretty colors I just I love of course you know me I love the bright orange color and then the purple and the green it's really pretty so, fairground socks by Kay Jones lastly I have fallen down the ranunculus train I know everybody's doing it I'm on the bandwagon we'll see how it goes i hope i love it and i hope i want to knit a whole bunch of them because it looks like a really pretty pattern i haven't got very far though but i am going to i ordered this in new so it's kind of um, a new thing here the wool of the andes worsted weight in the color current 110 yards for 50 grams and pretty kind of a deep purpley brown really pretty all I've done so far is the collar <laughs> I cast on 60 stitches um, I know she has a whole bunch of different um, cast ons I had been watching Amber over at a lovely yarn and she has made I think four of these now and she was talking about just she had just done she didn't do any of the cast ons that were on that on the pattern she just did a long tail cast on I did a German twisted cast on and I cast on the 60 stitches and it is a twisted rib cast on so this looks really tiny for my neck we'll see how it goes I hope it stretches out and looking forward to that it's going to be i'm hoping it's going to be really really pretty i will say this here and on my socks there's a smaller one and i really like these uh, for the needles just stitch stoppers and these are from twice sheer cheap this is just an extra one that i had they come in different sizes. They call them tip ties. I will have this linked. They're called point protectors. There you go. I really like these. And so you cut, it gets, comes with one of the larger size, two of the medium ones, and then two of the small ones. So the small one definitely fits on this, you know, 2.25 really well. So it will definitely keep your stitches on there. So I really like those. The only th other thing I had ordered in were some really cute stitch markers. Uh, uh, this lady started following me on Instagram and I instantly had to go and look at her store on Etsy and I did purchase these really cute stitch markers. They are these and these are kind of heavy, but they're cute, cute, cute little pumpkins. Look how cute and fall they are. 
And then these ones are leaves. They're really pretty. All the fall colors. And really nicely packaged. She did a really great job. Uh, her name's it's Brooklyn Notions out of Brooklyn, New York. And there you go. So really cute. Head on over to her shop and check her out because those are just so stinking cute. And of course you can choose the way you want them on there. I just got the rings because I like it just to use it at the beginning of a row. But those are super cute too. That is all that, uh, and she did send, I guess I should say, she did send a little extra and it's super cute. Look how pretty this one is. Yeah, it's super cute little heart. And she does have this one on one of the lobster claw things there. So just a little extra. And that is all I have for whips and works in progress. The other thing that I'm going to start at some point, maybe after the mystery knit along, the only other thing I'm going to do is the Manhattan vest by Tori Yu, and I'll have a picture. And I am going to make this, it looks so cute with like, it just the vest front and then how it, opens on the side uh, and it's just open so you can layer it um, it just looks adorable so I have in my stash I believe this is a discontinued yarn but I'm going to do it out of this cloud born fibers the alpaca worsted and this is 100% alpaca so I figured for a layering piece it probably wouldn't be bad that it's all alpaca Someday I'm going to learn where my camera is. There you go. So I think it'll be really pretty in this warm, fuzzy yarn. So that's going to be the next thing. Other than that, life talk. Um, not much going on, just work and life. We did go to the zoo, which I'll have some pictures up here at the end for my son's birthday. Uh, he turned 22, my son that we adopted when he was six and a half from Thailand. Um, the fact that he's 22, I don't know where all the years have gone, but they have gone. And so he wanted to go to the zoo for his birthday. So we went and uh, went to the zoo here. It was uh, my husband and I, We it was the first time we had gone. The kids had already gone before, but it was the first time we had gone. And it's about an hour and a half away, but it's a very large zoo very good for kiddo. So if you're ever in the Raleigh uh, or Asheville, Asheville, I think it's Asheville, you can uh, go to that. It's a really good zoo. So we went there. We'll have pictures at the end. The only other thing, uh, books, the book, I haven't been reading a ton. Um, I did finish the Friday Night Knitting Club by Kate Jacobs, and it was pretty good. It's a solid, you know, solid book, has some knitting, interesting things happen. I am reading the second one with uh, most of the same characters in it. It's pretty good. That's, that's about what I have to say. You know, it's a solid listen to. And the last thing I have for therapy talk is just a really quick grounding technique that I often talk to people about. And that is called 54321. You can definitely look it up. It's a good one to use and um, it's pretty simple. And it is uh, five things that you can see around you. So grounding techniques are really good for when maybe you're just kind of stressed out, your emotions are running high, or you um, maybe are close to having a panic attack. You just, maybe something's happening. You need to be back in that present moment so this is a good grounding technique for that. So five things you can see, uh, that's naming them out loud, potentially, you know, I can see this in my room. I can see this out the window, those sorts of things, bringing you back into that present moment. 
four things you can touch. Maybe, you know, you it's things that you have around you for that purpose because maybe things are going on in your life and you know you're going to need that extra grounding time. Uh, maybe having something soft that you like to touch or, um, you know, maybe it's just paying really close attention to the where you're sitting, the way your body's positioned, those sorts of things. Uh, three things you can hear. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's a dog barking outside. Um, maybe you put on the TV. Two things you can smell. Maybe you light a candle or you have some scented lotion. And then finally, one thing you can taste. Maybe you just pop a piece of chocolate or a piece of candy in your mouth. So just a really quick little therapy uh, grounding technique that I talk to people about pretty much all the time every day it seems so I just thought I would pop that in there uh, I'm glad that you got to spend some time with me again uh, please tell your friends if you have anybody that's interested and would like to come hang out that would be lovely please don't forget to like subscribe and ring the bell and I probably won't podcast again before Rhinebeck so I'll podcast after and uh, please come by and see me either at Woolen Folk or Rhinebeck. I will have a little something for you. And I would really love to meet any of you that I'm able to see in, in real life, IRL, right? So I hope you guys all have a wonderful October. Please take care and uh, give yourself the same grace that you would give everyone else. Take care. Bye-bye.